In the previous video, we began pre-processing our data frame by identifying missing and inconsistent data elements, removing those missing observations, fixing the inconsistent data elements, and storing our work in a new data frame called SE Complete. The next step for pre-processing our data is to explicitly coerce all of the variables into their appropriate atomic class type. If we take a look at the structure of our data, we see that all of the data were implicitly coerced as character vectors, and we know this because we see the abbreviation CHR for each of the variables. Again, we can see the structure of the data if we click on this arrow up here in the top right hand corner. So we have to make sure that all of these variables are in their proper atomic class type because we'll have implications for plotting and data analyses later. Let's start with variable Q30. Remember that variable Q30 represents the amount of years students have been taking private lessons. Let's use the unique function to take a look at all of the response types. And we see that we have five response types, one to two years, less than one year, two to three years, more than five years, and three to five years. So it's a categorical variable, which means we need to change it to a factor vector. And there is a monotonic ordering that's represented in the data. The ordering should be less than one year, then one to two years, two to three years, three to five years, and then more than five years. So in this case, we need to coerce the variable into an ordered factor vector. So let's create a new vector. We'll call it Q30 ordered. We'll use the factor function. We need to identify the original variable. Remember, we need to call on the object first. Use the dollar sign notation. We'll set order to true. And then we'll use the levels argument with a concatenate function. And then we'll put the proper ordering of the years. And through the magic of video editing, I'm just going to paste this in. Note that each of the levels are in quotes. And there's a comma separating each of them outside of the quotes. Now, one thing to point out here is that we could see all of the code simply by scrolling left to right. One thing that we can do, and this is going to become important when we're working with longer code, is that we can break the code. And what that means is that after each argument, so after each comma, we can split the code and put a new argument on another line. So I'll hit return here, and I'll hit return here. Now we can see the code a little bit better. So when we break our code, that's not at all going to change how the code is run. It's just for ease of use, and it gives us a better representation of everything that's contained within the function. Okay, let's run this code, and then we'll look at the structure to double check it. And now we have an ordered factor vector with five levels. OK, next variable Q9. Q9 represents the age of the student. And when we're working with an age variable, traditionally, it's going to be stored as a numeric variable. So let's again take a look at all the categories using the unique function. So here we have a total of 11 categories. So there are a few steps that we need to take with this. First, just for practice, let's put these in the correct order. Then we're going to have to remove the character string of years old from each category. And then we're going to coerce it to a numeric vector. So let's create a new object. And we'll use the same commands from before. So we'll use the factor function. We'll set the order to true. And then we'll specify our levels. I'll just paste this in there with the magic of video editing. I'll run the code. Let's look at the structure. And we'll see it now it's an ordered factor vector with 11 levels. OK, now we need to remove the string of characters years old. So in order to do that, we're going to use a package called string r. I already have it installed on my computer. So I'm simply going to use the library function. And the function that we're going to use is stir remove all. So let's store this in a new object. We'll call it q9 character removed. In here, we'll use the stir remove all function from the string r package. Now, the first thing we have to do is identify the vector we're working on. So in this case, we'll use the q9 ordered vector. And then within double quotes, we need to identify what we need to remove. And one additional thing we have to do is identify it within brackets. So I'll create our open and closed brackets. And then we want to remove the character string years old. I'll run the code. And then now we can take a look at the structure. And we see here that it's converted back to a character vector. And keep in mind, we already coerced it to an ordered factor vector. So that step wasn't necessarily needed. But it was good practice for us to think about the steps that we need to do. So now the next thing we need to do is coerce this to a numeric vector. So let's create a new object. We'll call it Q9 numeric. We'll use the as numeric function. And then we'll pass in our character removed vector. Now if we take a look at the structure, we see that it's a numeric variable. 
Okay, next let's take a look at our Q7 variable, which represents the instrument of the student. Let's first take a look at each of the response categories using the unique function. So here we have six unique responses, guitar, drums, piano, keyboard, bass, other, and vocal. So in this case, again, it's a categorical variable. However, there isn't a monotonic ordering that needs to be represented here. So it doesn't need to be an ordered factor vector. It just needs to be a factor vector. However, in this case, one good practice is to put them in alphabetical order. And another thing to think about is that we have an other category. So this is going to become important when we're plotting. In general, if there's an other category, we want to put that category last. So what we can do is we can specify a specific ordering here to put them alphabetical and then move the other category to the end. So let's create a new object. We'll call it Q7 ordered. We'll use the factor function. We'll identify our variable. I'm going to break the code and I'll give us a little extra space to work with. Here we don't need to set order to true because it's not an ordered factor vector. However, we do want to specify the order of the levels. So we'll use the levels argument. We'll concatenate it. And then through the magic of video editing, I'm just going to simply paste the correct order here. So notice it's in alphabetical order and we've moved other to the end. We'll run the code. Now, because it's a factor vector, we can take a look at the ordering using the levels argument. So you see, we have the correct order of the levels. So our last three variables, Q16, Q17, and Q18 are Likert type responses. So there's a four category response structure, strongly disagree, disagree, agree, and strongly agree. So for each of these, there is a monotonic ordering from least agreeable to most agreeable. So to check the responses, let's again use the unique function. And let's do this for each of them. So we see that we do have the four responses. So in this case, we need to coerce them to be ordered factor vectors with the ordering of strongly disagree, disagree, agree, strongly agree. So let's create new vectors. We'll start with Q16. We'll call it Q16 ordered. Again, we'll use the factor function. We'll identify the variable. We'll set ordered to true. We'll use the levels argument with the concatenate function. And we'll start with strongly disagree. Disagree. Agree. And strongly agree. We'll run the code, take a look at the structure, and we have an ordered factor vector. So now we need to do this for Q17 and Q18. So just to make this a little quicker, let's just copy the code, and we'll change the numbers to match the item. We'll run each of these, and then again we'll check the structure. Ordered factor vector. Ordered factor vector. So an artifact of doing this pre-processing is that we have all new vectors that are not contained within the data frame. So what we need to do now is aggregate all of this data into a data frame. So let's create a new object. We'll call it SE processed. SE standing for self-evaluation, processed meaning that we've processed all of the data. In order to create a data frame, we're gonna use the data.frame function. And then we simply just need to list all of the vectors that we want to compile into the data frame. Again, magic of video editing. I'll run the code. And we can now take a look at the structure of our new data frame. And we see now that each of the variables are coerced into their proper atomic class type. So the last thing that we want to do is we want to clean up the names of the variables. So when we created the vectors, we were naming them based upon how we were manipulating them. In this case, however, it doesn't necessarily make sense to have these names. So why don't we change the names to let them represent what they actually are? So in order to do that, we can use the names function. And then within the names function, we'll pass in our new data frame, which is SE processed. And then if we want to make changes to the names, we can use the get symbol. And then we'll simply create a list using the concatenation function of all the proper names. So Q30 is the years participating in private lessons. So let's call this years participating. Now note when I'm creating these names, I'm not putting any spaces. I'll either separate the words with capitals or you can use an underscore to separate the words. The choice is yours. The next variable, Q9, is the age of the student. So let's just call it child age. Q7 is the instrument that the student plays. Let's call it instrument. And then Q16, Q17, Q18, obviously based upon the numbers, it comes from a larger data set. But here, this is the data we're gonna work with. So why don't we just change them to item one, item two, and item three respectively. So we'll call it item one. 
item two and item three. We'll run the code, take a look at the structure now. And we see that we have all of the names changed. Okay, so now we have a complete data set with all of the variables having their correct atomic class type. And now we're ready for some more downstream analytical processes.